All right, I am back uh, in my quest to create a doodle classifier. Um, I finished looking at and examining and processing the data in processing using the load bytes function and rendering the images to a window and saving out the data files. So what I have now, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna quit processing. What I did in between <laughs> the previous video and this one, sure, save, um, <clears throat> is I went, oops, uh, and I created a sketch called, uh, a folder called Doodle Classification, and in that folder there are now, there's a data folder with three files, Cats 1000, Rainbows 1000, Trains 1000. So I have 1000 train doodles, 1000 rainbow doodles, and 1000 cat doodles. Now, do I really have enough data to make a highly accurate, amazing, impressive doodle classifier? Probably not. I also probably don't have the neural network deep learning architecture to do it really, really well because I might want to add something called a convolutional layer. I will come back to that someday in the videos that I make. But I just want to try to use my basic JavaScript neural network library in a very simple way, use all those doodles as input to demonstrate the training process. So how am I gonna do this? Well, first of all, actually, honestly, I'm, I'm not even ready for this yet. I need to just sort of see, do, do, can I get the data into, into JavaScript? So if you look now, I'm started a P5 sketch and I'm going to add something like this to it. Function preload. And I'm gonna create some variables like cats, trains, and uh, what's the other thing? Rainbows. And I'm gonna say cats equals load bytes, cats, dot, cats 1000 dot bin. So I'm going to load, use preload uh, to load all of these files. Now, I've got something that I need to tell you. If you, if it is March 2nd, 2018, and you are typing this code along with me, um, this won't work because the load bytes function as of the time of recording this video is not implemented in P5. I have, with this example, a little extra file that I'm calling loadbinary.js that has a version of the load bytes function written into it. And I intend to, at some point, make a separate video, hopefully, about submitting that as a pull request to P5, then load bytes will work in P5. But hopefully, I'm using version 0.60 of P5, or at least that's the version that I want to be using. I'll have to check what I'm actually using. But um, So a future version will hopefully have it. But this is hopefully going to work. So I'm going to try to load all three of these files. So let's look. One thing I wanted to mention, by the way, is I wanted to show you that I, I kind of had this moment, this sort of like moment earlier today where I realized like, oh, look at these nice small files. They're 784 kilobytes. Well, why are they 784 kilobytes? Because 784 kilobytes is 784,000 bytes. And remember, each byte is one pixel. They're 28 by 28 images with 784. So I have 1,784 pixel images. This is how binary works on the computer. It's kind of exciting to see that really work out so nicely. The numbers work out so nicely. So if I add this to my sketch and I go and refresh the page here, oops, it's going to say file not found. Why is it going to say file not found? Because I forgot that I have them in a data directory. So I need to add the data directory. Now I'm going to do this. Now, OK, let's look at this. Cats. Cats is an object with a property called bytes. And there you can see there's an array. And if I kind of open this up, we can see like, oh boy, there's a lot of stuff in there. And I can kind of dig into it and look. These are those pixel values. There's a lot of zeros because there's a lot of black pixels because it's the drawings originally are white on black. Um, I, I, I think I'm going to alter that. Uh, but but um, so you can see this is working. One thing you might, might be new to you, which is a little bit strange, is that this is a uint8 array, which I find to be somewhat terrifying because I'm used to just, it's an array, it's got stuff in it. There are actually, there is something in JavaScript which is called a typed array. It's, it's kind of like a contract you make saying, this is going to be an array, but you know, you can, I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to tell you what's in it. It's, I'm only going to be able to put this kind of data in it so you can store the data in memory more efficiently. And so this is a particular kind of array that can only store integers. Um, that's going to be particularly useful for us. That's because we're loading that binary information. All right, so moving on, let's at least try to draw the images into the P5 canvas so that we can see that things are working correctly. 
So I'm going to come back. I'm going to basically now do exactly what I did in processing, but in P5. And so in setup, let's do the cats. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to say, let me just do uh, 100. Uh, and I'm going to um, use N to go through all 100 of these. Then what, for each one, I need to say, I want to create an image. And that, oh no, I want to say, I need to say create image. So this is one thing that's tricky about P5. The function create image creates a basically block of pixels for you to work with. Create IMG creates a DOM element that can be embedded in the page. And I, I could use either one in this case, but I'm just going to make my life simpler and create an image that's 28 by 28. Then what I need to do is go through all 784 pixels. And I need to say image.pixels index i equals uh, cats index i plus, I need some offset. So the offset, offset is n times 784, right? Because each block is 784 pixels. Um, part of me wants to like split it up and have objects, but whatever, this is going to be fine. Cat plus offset. Then I'm going to say image.update pixels. Thank you, thank you. That's not a sound effect. That's actually people in the hallway applauding. They're not applauding for me, though. Hopefully, no one's going to come knock on the door and say I'm being too loud. Uh, load pixels. And then I should be able to do exactly the same thing where I draw each image at an x and a y. So x is n uh, modulus 10 times 28, and, and y is, well, I'm going to have to use floor here because um, no matter what, um, JavaScript does floating point uh, division, n divided by 10 times 28. This is really what I did in the previous one. I just want to be able to see that the stuff is coming in. So this now, I'm sure I've made some mistakes, but let's just see if we see the cats now in the canvas. I see nothing. I see nothing. That is not good. So let's see, what could I have done? Oh, cats.bytes. So dot .bytes, I need to say. There we go. Ooh, something's coming in, but it's totally off. Ooh, that looks like a mess. What have I got wrong? I plus offset. I less than 784, cats, bytes, image, pixels, I. Uh, what am I missing here? Oh, yes, I forgot something super important. In JavaScript, native HTML5 canvas does not store each pixel as a single, col single integer. So in processing, each pixel is a single integer which can be segmented out into the RGBA components. The actual pixel array in JavaScript is 784 times four long. There is a spot in the array for R, for G, for B, for A. So it's pixel zero, R, G, B, A. Pixel one, R, G, B, A. So I need to, I totally forgot, have a times four here. Uh, then, ugh, oh my goodness. No, no, no. I can just do this, times four here. And whoops, let me zoom out. I can say, let me get the actual value from the array and just put it in another and I can say pixel i times 4 is val and then that's the red value and these are just grayscale so plus 1 and I'm going to goofily add a plus 0 just so my code lines up because that's the kind of person I am. <laughs> then plus 2 and everything I'm doing right now is just for the purpose of drawing so um, and then this needs to be 255. So basically I want to say what's that single value inside of the cat's byte array. And I need to take that value and give it to the red, green, and blue parts of the image and have no transparency. And now I'm expecting to see, there we go. There's all the cats. And um, I prefer it to look like this. And there we go. So now we can see that I can get the data into JavaScript. One more thing before I move on to the next video. Let's prepare the data 
Let's prepare the data into arrays of training images and testing images. And there's a nice way that I just learned that there's a function I could use called subarray, which allows me to essentially like pull out or point to a portion of the array. So let me let me discuss what I'm going to mean here. So so this is the um, this is the raw data. So I'm going to just rename these like cats data, cats data, trains data, rainbows data. So I'm gonna, I don't know why I'm using suddenly the underscore data <laughs> naming convention, but I just wanna name these data because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create some other arrays like cats, uh, cats training, uh, cats uh, uh, oh, trains, oh boy, this is bad, trains training, rainbows training. Let's just get the training data first. So if I have a thousand images, I want to use the first 800 as the training set. And I'm going to save the second 200 as the testing set. So what I'm going to do, and we could comment all this stuff. This was me just seeing that I could see it. I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to say I want, uh, for example, cats training to be a new array, just a plain old array. Then I'm going to go from zero all the way up to 800. And I'm going to say every element of cat's training is cat's data subarray. And what the subarray array function wants is the beginning and the end of the subarray that I want to pull out. So I always want to pull out 784 pixels essentially. So I want to go from i, well, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to say offset equals i times 784. And so I want to go from offset to offset plus 784. And I think now is the time that I'm really putting this into a project that that 784 number really should be in a variable. And I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to use const. <laughs> Uh, const is a way of declaring a variable that you never intend to reassign, and it's a nice way of me protecting myself from ever reassigning it by accident. And I probably should be using const in a lot more places in the way that I code, but I use it very rarely. So I'm going to say const length, len for length is 784. So I'm going to say i times len, and this is going to be offset len. So let's just, so this should, if I've done this correctly, we should be able to see now, I'm going to hit refresh, and I have a syntax error on line 45. Oh, I know, the, using const was really exciting, wasn't it? Party goers who are outside that door. Forever in this video, okay. Subarray is not a function because what do I need to say? Cats data dot bytes. I forgot that that array is inside of an array called bytes. And now if I look at cats training, we can see there's 800 784 pixel, 800 arrays, each one with 784 elements in them. So we can see here, here's the first one, here's the second one, and this looks good. You can see there's all the numbers, this is good. I now have my training data. Now, I'm actually gonna do something kind of a little bit nuts, and I'm gonna change this to 1000. Uh, and um, let's see, let's call that const total input, total data. I don't know. I don't know. These are, I gotta think about my variable names, total data. So I might change that someday. And I'm gonna say if um, I'm going to, I'm gonna say uh, if i is less than 800, do this. I'm just gonna do this hard code this right now. Else, uh, and then I'm going to say cats testing is also an array. Oh, couldn't training and testing just have the same number of characters? My life would be so much better if that were the case. Oh, it's going to, my auto format's going to change that. Oh, well. Okay, so now cats testing index i. Okay, this is good. Now, here's the thing. This is correct, but... I've got to go from i, I minus 800. So this should really be a variable. I'm going to say let, um, I don't know, what, what threshold? <laughs> this is very distracting. Uh, I'm going to just call it threshold. Equal uh, 
a floor 0 0.8 times total data. And so now that's going to be, there's going to be 800 going into training and 200 going into testing. And this should not be 800, it should be threshold. So this is how I'm thinking of my data, dividing it into testing and training. And let's look at this. Threshold. And now I can say cats training is 800 arrays and cats testing is 200. Perfect. We are doing well. Part of me now, what I, I think I would like to do is actually make a variable just called cats, one called trains, one called rainbows. I'm going to make these objects. And in the objects, I'm going to say cats.training is an array and cats.testing. So I'm going to make these properties cats.training, cats.testing. And now, uh, oops, if I just look at cats, sorry, if I just look at cats, there you are. <laughs> we see I have the training and the testing. The testing is 200, the training is 800. Boy, this is tedious, but it's worth it. We're working on, we're preparing our data. By golly, I'm gonna dedicate two whole, two whole tutorial videos to, to working on the data. So now, um, wouldn't it be nice if I made this into a function? Let's make this into a function. Let's refactor this into a function. And I'm going to just get, I'm going to, I'm going to call this uh, prepare data. Call this prepare data. I want to get a uh, category and the data that goes with it. So I'm adding the training and testing to a given category from given data. Look at me refactoring the code while I'm working. And then I can just say prepare data, cats, cats data. Prepare data, rainbows, rainbows data. And prepare data, what was the last one? Trains, trains data. If I did this correctly, we can look and see at cats, there we go, rainbows, there we go, and uh, trains, there we go. Now, whether or not the data is still the correct data in there, I'm just gonna sort of feel somewhat confident that I did this correctly, but I have now, we have now completed sort of working with and examining the data in processing to save some new data files with much less data in them. I've now, in JavaScript, I'm able to load those binary files, and I have a little function to divide it up into training and testing. So now, in the next video, I can finally write the piece of code that I've been wanting to do all along. Let neural network equal new neural network. So that is what will happen in the next video, and thank you for watching. Perhaps I will see you there.